Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Reverend Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing morning. And I want to welcome you wherever you're following us from. I believe that the Lord is going to speak to us as he has always done in our lives. And I'm excited as always for this privilege and time to speak the word of God into our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to pray and then we'll delve into the subject matter of the day. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we bless you because every day, every morning, you give us an opportunity to hear your word. It's one of those moments that, Father, we appear before you with our hearts full of gratitude and ready to receive your word. So this morning, we open up our hearts to you, that you will minister to us by the grace of God. I pray for divine power over my life, that you give me heavenly utterance to speak to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, this uh, the last uh, two days, we have been discussing a subject I have titled the Heart Series. We did introduce the episode, and uh, yesterday we discussed uh, issues from the heart that I thought it's important for us to discuss. And we looked at the negative aspects of uh, the things that could be in the heart without you knowing. We read a scripture which we kept, we'll keep referring to until it sinks into our lives. The book of Jeremiah, chapter number 17, verse number 9 through to verse number 10. Maybe you've never read this scripture, but this is our reference point. Jeremiah 17, verse number 9 through to 10, the Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, suck the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So the heart is central in our lives. The heart is the seat of physical life. This is the inner personal life, which is the source of our motives, our passions, our thought processes, and, the, and where the spring or the springs, the issues of life spring from. The Bible tells us elsewhere, guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it springs out the issues of life. Yesterday, we looked at negative things that could be sitting in the hearts of people without knowing. We talked about wicked imaginations. We talked about lust. We talked about, uh, you know, deceit. We talked about folly or foolishness. We talked about heaviness. We talked about bitterness. We talked about sorrow. We talked about backsliding. We talked about pride, we talked about haughtiness, uh, you know, superiority complex. We talked about rage, and we talked about envy. And we said, we agreed yesterday that these things could be sitting in the hearts of people, and some people would never know that this thing actually sits in their hearts. Praise God. Today, we look at the good things that are in the heart, that we need to work on, strengthen and keep growing in our lives. So there's also a good side about the heart. We'll start by reading the book of Proverbs, chapter number three and verse number five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So trust also sits in the heart. Trust also sits in the heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Very, very interesting scripture there. So when you talk about somebody is trustworthy, somebody can be relied on, we are trusting God. That particular element sits in the heart. It should be functional. It is a factor of the operations of our heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. But Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 23. The Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. This we have spoken. I have insinuated on the scripture that we need to 
uh, keep our heart with all diligence. So when we say a man is diligent or a woman is diligent, I can assure you it is beginning or it has its origin from the heart. Diligence is a factor of the operations of our hearts. Keep your heart with all diligence. From it, spring out the issues of our, life, of our lives. You must understand, child of God, that the issues of life reside in the heart. Praise the name of the Lord. We are going to look at good attributes about the heart. This is what we are looking at. Uh, Proverbs number 6 and verse number 14. Proverbs 6, verse number 14. Perversity. Uh, I, don't know, I wanted to look at the word. Uh, let me get another translation of the Bible. 423 is very, very important actually for us to hear and to understand what is it that God is saying. I want, in fact, that was actually in the negative. I should have talked about it yesterday. It was about perversity. So a negative aspect of the heart, which I should have titled yesterday, is in perversity. That is um, uh, Proverbs 6, verse 14. It says, uh, the pervert, they, their perverted hearts plot evil and they constantly start trouble. So you should know that was an aspect we should have spoken about yesterday, but we did, and I say it today, perversity. Praise God. Let's continue the good attributes of the heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am excited about this session because I know it is healing people's lives. It is causing people to rise. All you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools be of an understanding heart. When we say, oh, this brother, this sister understands me, I can tell you it is a function of the operations of the heart of that individual. And let me tell you, children are able to resonate very, very easily with the heart of an individual which is pure. Oh, a man or woman with a pure heart. This is about understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. Understanding has got its origin on the functions of the heart. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. I'm getting excited because we are looking at scripture upon scripture to bring meaning into our lives by the grace of God. Verse, Proverbs 15, verse number 13, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So merry, cheerfulness is, is sorrow. So when you look at it from the positive side, it is cheerfulness. On the negative side, it is sorrow. We discussed about it also yesterday. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. It's also a function of the heart. We are discussing the heart series. The Lord told us the heart is, is, is above all things. It is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You must know your heart. You must interrogate what is going on in your heart. You must know what are the ongoings of your heart because you need to deal with your heart. There are many people whose hearts are not at the right place. No wonder families are breaking. There's a problem at the employment place. There's a problem in ministry. There's a problem in the nation. There's a problem wherever you're talking about because the hearts of many people is not sitting right. And we're here to make you understand and to see the need to strengthen the things that are positive in your heart and those that are negative. We ask God to help us to deal with them so we can flip the side to the, from negativity to positivity. Let's move on. We read the Bible again. Uh, this is very interesting. We want to read something that's very, very important here. Proverbs 15, verse number 14. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. Knowledge also resides in the heart. Praise God. When your heart yearns after knowledge, when your heart yearns to know something different, it originates from the heart. Oh, hallelujah. And if you're looking for joy, it also sits in the heart. 15, verse number 30. 15, verse number 30. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report 
makes bones healthy. The light of the eyes rejoices in the heart, and a good report makes the bones uh, healthy. So joy is also a function of the heart. When you say somebody is joyful, it's re originating from the heart. One more thing we need to look at is Proverbs 18 and verse number 15. We don't have a lot of time to discuss all these issues, but I'm just bombarding you with scripture. You can take time to read all those verses at your own time, and your life will never be the same again. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. <coughs> Excuse me. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. So, prudence is a function of the ongoings of the heart. Prudence is a function of the ongoing on of your heart. Praise God. Now you know that this heart, the central of our lives, the seat of inner personal life, the source of our motives, our passions, thought processes, and the spring of consciousness originate from the heart, whether positive or negative. Those things could be residing in your heart, sometimes with or without your knowledge. Praise the Lord. The, the New Testament teaches us to have a pure heart devoid of sin, with good thoughts, genuine forgiveness, and genuine love of God. Have you not read the scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter number 5 and verse number 8? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want you to understand, child of God, we must never forget that the heart is the personality of inner life. It is the seat of the emotional status of our consciousness. It is the seat of intellectual activities. It is the seat of volition, which is the faculty of power of using one's will. This is why the heart is central, so key to our lives. It is in the heart that man receives light, cleansed and renewed by the attention to the word of God. It's an inward renewal, a new birth that births a regeneration. True change in a man's life will not occur until there's a change in the heart of this man. True transformation, true change will not occur in a man unless the heart is touched. The Bible tells us, I will remove a heart of a stone and give you a heart of flesh that I can write my oracles in your heart. Now listen, if your heart is not receptive to the word of God, if your heart is not touched by the word of God, there can never be change in your lives. And that is why I chose this particular morning and this, this period to speak to us about the heart. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know the heart is such a central place that we cannot afford to overlook. Things could be going on in your heart and you don't know about it until something crazy happens. Then you will know what was going on in your heart. This heart is deceptive above all things and it is desperately wicked who can know it no wonder the bible consistently tells us guard your heart with all diligence because out of it springs out the issues of life i hope up to this point you are able to put yourself on a measure to understand the things that could be going on or have been going on in your heart tomorrow we discuss how to deal with God helping us to get from where we are to a position of where we know that we shall be constantly checking our hearts to ensure that we are living right and that our hearts are at the right place. So tomorrow we are going to be looking at um, how do you know that there's a problem in your heart? How do you know? We're going to be discussing how do you know 
there's an issue in your heart, then we'll discuss how do we deal with it. Praise God. How do you know there's an issue? What are the marks that your heart is not at the right place? Those are the things you're going to be looking at tomorrow, and then we'll come out with a spiritual solution to help you to get to a better place in your heart. We don't want your marriage to crash. We don't want you to have a problem with your employer. We don't even want you to have a problem with yourself. We want you to have a pure heart. The Bible tells us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Tomorrow we discuss marks of a heart that is having problems. That's what we discuss tomorrow. And then we come up with the solutions, spiritual solutions on dealing with these issues. That will mark the end of the teaching on the heart series. Please don't miss and invite your friends. Make sure you can post this on your platform or in the comment section, you may just want to type the name of a person you would want them to access this message. I have been blessed myself, and I'm asking God to continuously help me deal with my heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you because of your word, because there are many people who are troubled in their heart. I pray this morning that through this teaching, you will help us to deal with these issues and get to a better place. That we can build our marriages, build our businesses, continue to grow in our marketplace, in ministry, help us to deal with these issues. I want to thank you and to bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This has been your host and your servant, Reverend Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are on the heart series tomorrow. We have the season finale as we close the series of the heart. God bless you. Make sure you don't miss by the grace of God. Amen and amen. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.